Okay. So, my mic was off, and I think I know why. And I think I know why I'm having a couple of issues right now with OBS. Because I just updated Windows. Hey, Espeon, how you doing? I just updated Windows. And I think Windows fucked up all my settings. This is why nobody likes Windows 10. And for some reason, I can't fucking hear the goddamn game on my end. This is crazy. Let me open my settings real quick, see if I can fix this. Fix it live. Moderating tune set. Okay. Set that to default. Apply. I'm not sure if I might have to restart the stream. I might have to restart the stream. Because I can't hear jack shit. Let me check. Is this thing even, like, operating right now? Yeah, I... Yeah, okay, so my headphones are on, but I think OBS just is fucking up. But it's not OBS's fault, it's Windows' fault for doing that shit. I might have to restart the stream. <laughs> wow. That's... That's annoying. That is highly annoying. Let me try something else real quick. Maybe I can still save it. Maybe I can still save it live. What if I fuck with the monitoring settings? Hold up, let me see this. Advanced audio properties. Okay. Turn that off. Turn it back on. Ah! I can hear it now. There we go. I can hear it just fine now. Fucking Windows is a pain in my ass. It's a pain in everyone's ass. Also, for some reason, my my microphone stand is like a little wonky today. I don't know what the hell's up with that. It's like squeaky. I gotta throw some oil on that shit. But I think everything should be fine now. Why the fuck? I know you guys hear that. There's no way you don't hear me moving the fucking mic stand. It's so squeaky. Why is that happening? <laughs> I literally didn't touch it at all since last stream. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't mess up any of the audio on my end. Okay, yeah, there we go. Alright, everything should be fine. We're back in business. Uh, I should have a charger. Let me just make sure I... Uh, make sure I throw the charger on real quick. So we don't have to run out of... Out of, like, my headset doesn't run out of juice while I'm in the middle of this. I didn't think the update would fuck up my settings this much. I heard that it might fuck up some things, but I didn't think it would fuck it up this much. Alright, so, we're back in business. We're continuing case four, where we left off right at the beginning of the second day in the trial. December 27th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Also, for once, I was able to, I was able to eat some food before before recording anything. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who's the judge here anyways? Mr. Von Karma. Karma? Well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh very well, no opening statement, so... Not so fast, Judge. I was taking my time. Pause before speaking. Wait, what? I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. I highly doubt that. Maybe three minutes in game time? 
but in real life time, it'll probably be like an hour. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, you must be questioning everything. Must you must be? Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness, my decisive witness, to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Hmm. Mr. DL6. Witness, state your profession. Hmm? I, uh, I'm a proprietor of the restaurant The White Noodle at Gord Lake. And uh, I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, wa I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. I object to that! Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I do not ask him, Mr. Wright. Well, well, you can't throw a fucking testimony in court without his name. I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. I don't give a fuck about your prediction. Predictions are predictions. They are not fact. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. <coughs> oh, wow. Instantly, for some reason, my fucking back of my throat starts burning. I don't know why. The witness will state his name. Huh? Well, uh... I'm not really sure, yep. What do you mean? My uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. So how does he file, like, tax papers for the wet noodle? He can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness? Alright, cool. Testimony time. I'll make him remember. He'll remember it all. That fateful day, 15 years ago. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yep. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out at the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. And then I heard another bang. And then he said, see you in space, cowboy. And I was like, what? <laughs> just, about <laughs> just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Why are you objecting? What? Why are you objecting the judge? There's nothing to my, there's nothing to my question in my witness testimony. Nothing to question in my witness testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Uh, yes. Mr. Wright? What the fuck? Of course I'm gonna cross-examine that shit. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well. You may begin. Uh, what? Excuse me? Mr. Von Karma? What was that? He just had a heart attack. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Get him for tax fraud? Exactly. It's like, how you file those taxes for your shop if you don't fucking... You don't remember your name. It was the night, 24th. Just after midnight. Okay. The restaurant. Where I rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang. Then I looked out the window, saw a boat floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes by shore and a man walks by my window. Did the man say anything? Did you see the man? What the man look like? By your window. Yep, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. What's the matter now? I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Alright. 
can't believe who's dead. Are you sure? Uh-oh. Dad! <laughs> dead, wait, what? Dead Cretan Keith? He said, I can't believe he's dead. As he was walking by me, too. Alright. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. You just have a heart attack? This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into a cross-examination so I could so he can set me up for a fall. This guy. This guy looking like Dracula talking about What is a man? Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to end. I object! Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired the gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to fingerprints of Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter. F Wait, what? You're ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? I'll object to that objection. <laughs> what is a man? But the miserable pile of secrets. Exactly. Which one is that? Which, uh... Is that the beginning of, um... Oh, what is that the beginning of? Is that the beginning of, uh... That's the beginning of Symphony of the Night, right? Should be the beginning of Symphony of the Night. I believe so. Your Honor. This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all... But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even in even in this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Ah, oh, shit. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest. I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high of an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. My man is passed out on the floor. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for a misinterpretation of the facts. What? No. Hmm. The score finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Eh, Edgeworth. Wait, what? Really? We're just ending it? The accused will surrender to the court immediately. I call bullshit. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Wait! What? Who did it? Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry! He's here! He did it! What, what are you doing here? Listen. You gotta listen to me. I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. O order. Objection. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for an adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot. That night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remembered. Anyhow. I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. 
It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. For once, it's not Dracula stinking up the courtroom. It's the butts. Order. Order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us a final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't if only if it wasn't Larry. Larry came in with the fucking level three super on wake up. This guy, super unsafe. But he still hit it. Still hit that level three. Nobody expected it. He can make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth has just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor. If there's another witness in this... Uh, if there's another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make no mistake, in order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? Massacre. I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Oh, fuck it. Mr. Chrome Dome with the goddamn... Bringing it back. Mr. Von Karma. I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? You order me? How dare you? The court will adjourn for five minute recess. After that, we'll hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Judge said, no, game over. He said, hold up, run that back, run that back. My man had a free, he had a one up. I didn't see it. All right, courtroom 27th, 10, 1028 AM, district court, defendant's lobby number two. Whew, that was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that. Edgeworth? Eh? Oh, okay, he doesn't seem very happy. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel sandmine balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's... it's nothing. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Well, you see, it's because I shot him. <laughs> when he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what happened. I couldn't think straight. When I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me, I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have reason, really. I find it really hard to believe that, like, I understand for story reasons, that's probably why, but I find it really hard to believe in all actuality a prosecutor went like, I just really put my hands all over this fucking weapon. <laughs> right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance. Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials. Perfectly prepared witness. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone... <clears throat> he has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minutes trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Just like it's Persona 4. Just squeeze it. Fucking get all the juicy nectar. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15. Everything's on Larry now. December 27th. 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. 
court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're their last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. I love how he plans on Larry screwing it up. Eh. He said he has a knack for getting himself in trouble. That night, I was out in the boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in the rental shop dock. Rental. Oh, why did I. Ugh, why did I say it like that? Then just, then just as I was just thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was unusual, vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? I was kind of expecting an objection from Mr. Uh, Dracula over there. It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, if we come this far, there's no way we can... No way but forward. Let's go, Nick. Alright, Larry. First things first. I was looking for something. What was you looking for? Just say it. You're looking for something? Yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it that you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely, he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. Okay. Now I was thinking about going home. I heard this bang. Oh, back at the rental shop. Hmm. I quietly slept at the back of the rental shop. He only heard one bang, though, it seems. Around what time was that? Um, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12? Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Watches. Alright. Heard a bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't sure. I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Looked over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Didn't see a boat. Alright. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa, okay. Everybody just calm down. Hey, hey, simmer down, y'all. Just calm it. Sit down. I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of the case. Hmm. So after I heard a single shot, I went home. Why are you sweating? Why are you sweating like you're lying? So, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Hmm. Well, Nick. Hmm. It was pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Alright. Well, just for sake of saving our asses here. Alright. Heard this bang. I looked over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Oh, it changed. All right. They should have at least told me it changed. Where is it? Wait a sec, Larry. What? What? You only heard one bang. You sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Harsh testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. 
and the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? I don't... I don't think it works that way. Mr. Butts? What? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How can you not be sure? Eh, well... I, uh... I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh... Listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude. With my headphones. Wh what This guy. Order. Order and stop that booing. <laughs> they were booing him. What? Mr. Butts. Were you listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shabby, shot, shabby, shoddy testimony. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Uh, yeah, continue it. Your Honor, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. <sighs> Nothing's more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Nothing's more pitiful than a prosecutor who doesn't know when the guy's not guilty. That was a great comeback. I did it. Yeah, put him in a spot. Very well, Mr. Butts. <laughs> Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there was any other way out of this. Believe me. All right. It's lonely being on, <laughs> being alone on Christmas Eve. It's like, man, my girl left me. She went to Hawaii. That's why I was listening to an all-requested show on the radio, you see? I was listening to that real booming Wait, what? Listening to it real booming loud-like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying, too, when I heard it. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Come on, man. Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't it a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it's difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? And an uh, announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Also, the guy who interrupts the music during the radio because he thinks he has something smart to say. And then I want to curse him out because he fucking won't let the song play, and he skips over to the next song. That's right. I'm calling him out. Fucking... <laughs> Sorry. I had that recently. I was just like, come on, man, stop talking. I want to listen to the song. Anyways. <laughs> What's the meaning of this when he heard... <laughs> what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he couldn't... Or during songs. Because he thinks he's cool. <laughs> Call the sun because you just burned the vampire. <laughs> Damn. DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gun. Uh, could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I let's cross examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing the charade. I'm literally just fucking grasping at straws here. Alright, it's lonely being lonely on Christmas Eve. I was to all request a show on the radio. I was listening to the real boom loud, but I sure heard the gunshot. I remember exactly what DJ said when he heard the radio too. What they say. What did they say? Mr. Wright, please cease his pointless questions. What possible good knowing what the radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma at uh Indeed Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll add the question only if you some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Well, let's say he was listening to the volume pretty loud, and maybe Larry was near the window, 
and then the old guy heard someone by his window say some shit. It could have been the radio DJ. Huh? Well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? What'd he say? Just he said, yeah, it's almost Christmas. Alright. It's almost Christmas. Some Sometime on 24th, 25th shell shot approximately. Taken approximately. Ah! Aha! Aha! Look at that! Mmm! Mmm! Look at the time! Oh shit! Caught you! Why am I burning Larry so badly? <laughs> Look at this! I call bullshit! Larry! Are you absolutely sure that's that what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. As he says while he's sweating. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas. When he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after the midnight. This photo is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see... <clears throat> Let's see what the time was uh, the photo was taken when the gun when the gun triggered Mrs. Hart camera. Ah. Let's see, 12.15. 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is clear contradiction, Your Honor. Fucking got him. Fucking got him. Order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, the witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. S suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Buzz claims he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's wrong. He's right. I believe him. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard the gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Oh, I'll show you evidence. I'll make you put in your pipe and smoke it. Shows an empty lake. Automatically. Twelve. I assume this would work. It's an empty lake. Map. Fire three times. Heard two sounds. Just after midnight. Wait, what? After midnight? Alright. So he heard one shot before midnight. And she heard two shots after midnight. Okay, so that explains why the gun would be fired three times. I'm pretty sure this will save my ass. Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lana Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh. Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in the photograph. It is why the photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph has was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why the photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard the gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem to be the case. Then where does this leave us? Ms. Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, 
That night, there were two sets of gunshots with the 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises, yes? There's no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed triggered the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man, clear. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court your evidence if you could. Oh, I can prove it. Put this in your fucking beard and shave it, motherfucker. Ha! This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses you testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Wait, what? The third shot? Oh, I guess he's not going in order then. Because <laughs> I thought he was all like, two shots after midnight, then Larry heard the last shot. I'm like, what? <laughs> hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes before after midnight. Why I ask you? Why? Oh no, I better think of something quick. Hmm. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ugh. Oh. What's wrong, Nick? I've had it. I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course, I remember. The murder in the case had the same idea as the murder- Wait, what? The murder in this case had the same idea as the murder in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right. I mean, is it safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up the entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murder here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. This was shown by the witness's photo. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on the boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. It wasn't suicide. It was an enemy stand. <laughs> I only have three meters. That's my range. The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this acute but this assumes that the victim was shot at 50 minutes after midnight. What do you mean of that, Mr. Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence at the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 1215. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot was, uh, before the sh eh, before the shot on the lake. That's the only way Edgeworth could be innocent. Hmm. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men are on the boat, the murderer and Hammond. Edgeworth and the murderer. Edgeworth and Hammond. It's Edgeworth and Hammond. Miles Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. Yes, I believe you are mad. This is exactly what I've been telling the court this, this whole time. You're agreeing with me? And yet, what'd you just say? 
that Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before the gunshot on the boat. Yes, that's what I said. I was just testing you, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. I'm gonna have to penalize you for this foolishness. <laughs> Damn it. Hangman did it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Saw the reflection in the fucking lake. It was the hangman. I ask again. Alright. Edgeworth and the murderer. The murderer and Hammond. It has to be Edgeworth. H Edgeworth has to be on that boat. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. And that's why he didn't suspect anything when the murder took Robert Hammond's place. Mm. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. L ludicrous, Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's, uh... Well, we don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bruh. Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. Huh? The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, the old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop. Where, where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out to the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on the boat? What? Well then, where'd the murder take place? Go the judge where the murder took place. The murder took place... Over here... Maybe, somewhere in the woods, or over here... This is kind of a vague-ass area. Has to be one of these two spots. Or maybe in the pathway? Highly doubt it. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say over here. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. And that way he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony if you will. That night he was out on the lake in the boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he starts to head home, he hears a gunshot. He heard the gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at that time. In other words, gunshot was very, very close by. Oh my god, Larry almost got shot. And <laughs> who would that be? And where would that be if he just returned the boat? The boat shot. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth that went out to the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes. Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanation is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, your honor. Create a witness. 
The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot will look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits, waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol and the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking for the edge of the lake, that would appear that one of the men on the boat has shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. And that's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that everything else falls into place, the boat shot Terry Kicker swam, swam, barely use that word, swam back to his shop. Then he puts, then he puts Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gort Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. I'm about to lock this man up. I'm about to solve two cases in one. Very well. While we're here waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard that the you heard what the defense said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishing so astonishingly so in fact. Yes. Several days ago I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he has something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff? Are you conducting a trial? We're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. The witness has disappeared, sir! He isn't at the boat shop either! What? What should I do? Find him quickly! We cannot allow him to get away. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Papadopoulos. I didn't mean to lose him. I can't, I can't find him anywhere. He just kind of gave me the slip, you know? Mr. Von Connor, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been in, uh, issued. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I'll extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. And one more thing! Like his Jackie Chan adventure, he just smacks him in the back of the head. <laughs> just who's the boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Old man gave everyone the slip, started like hobbling about on a cane. He's like, I'm fucking, he said, <laughs> I'm out of here. Started, started hobbling about, waddling like a penguin. Hey, Nick, you did it. Hey, yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? Was something, uh, was there something else? Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I shifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Phoenix, I'm afraid to tell you that you didn't button up your coat all the way. It's been bothering me the whole entire time. I'm sorry. Edgeworth. No, there's, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to, to get it off my chest, but mm, I can't make up my mind. What's this about, Edgeworth? 
And then the fanfic created itself. It's a nightmare I have. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a moita. What are you telling me, Edgeworth? Tell me you're a moitera? How dare you? You come to my fucking... You come to my defense office on the day of my assistant's wedding and you tell me you're a moitera? What the fuck, man? December 27th to 11 p.m. Right in Co. Law Offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a moita. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I mean, he looks like the type. I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. <sighs> I had to yawn. Holy shit. But he never takes someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo! How's everybody doing? Who the fuck let you in? What do you think of my performance today? I think I should fucking wring your neck out. That's what I think. I had him swooning in the, in the aisles, huh? Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh. Uh, yeah? I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell me the truth. Was it like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? Uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys, you guys should be bowing before me, yeah. Bow before your hero. Bow before your hero? I will give you one prize, though. Check this out. Whoa! I was hot out there. Hot! I'm glad someone's happy about how this case is going. He seems too happy to care about anything I show him. Damn it. Larry? He really helped out in the trial today. He did? If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Ezra would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. And that post shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy didn't. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just sitting in the audience, you know. From where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about the night? Nick? I don't know. But what I know is. I'm gonna believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me! Right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? Aw, oh, Maya, I always believe in you, don't worry. But why you, Larry? Huh? Actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Enough with the silent treatment. All right, guess that'll go and explain. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edwards so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Um, sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm gonna hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? I'm getting some Persona vi Persona, what am I meaning? I'm getting some Danganronpa vibes in here. The class trial is now in session. You remember Larry Spring in the third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Uh, I see. Anyways, this kid envelope disappeared. 
with $38 still inside. Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why'd you forget though. You were out of school that day. Anyways, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. It was coming down. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kid in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as a defendant. I didn't do it. Sounding like the kid from fucking Polar Express, you know, when like the elves are looking at the monitor. And he's all like, who ate the cookies that night? And he's like, it's not me. I didn't do it. Guilty, he's guilty. Guilty, it was you. Thief. Give him the money back. You're such a meanie. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. You're not gonna play with you anymore. Yeah, you're not bar- what? Oh my god, I can't read that fast. Give me a break. 50 cents, I loaned you. Wait, what? Give me back the 50 cents I loaned you. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in this trial is evidence. Anything else is no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. Miles. Look at this fucking white knight. Look at him. This guy. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That's why, your honor, this boy's innocent. But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. You don't need no proof. Make him say sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? Oh, I know who that is. It is always how is everybody's ganging up on picking one on a, picking on one another. Just think about how he feels. He says he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I'll replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best friends. And then I entered the preliminary, the preliminary rounds of the tuning exams. And then I went on to become the Hokage. I finally had my friends. What is my dog doing? What are you doing over there? Don't come running up to me. Go, go in your cage. What are you doing? Go sit in your cage. I'm not letting you up here. You're crazy. Go sit in your cage, buddy. I turn the corner. He's like jumping on top of his cage like a fucking animal. Well, he is an animal, but you know what I mean. Like, savage. This guy. This fucking guy. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone. Without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Yeah, well. I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I had been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So, I take it kind of personally, see? When someone, when something smells, usually the butts. At the trial. Anyways, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm gonna become a defense attorney, just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident? Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, it's not that edgy. It's not the edgy I used to know. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. 
never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had to become who he became. And that's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean. And that's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he had to meet uh, me whether he wanted to or not in court. God damn, it sound like sound like you're paying child support, Phoenix. I know you had to fucking meet me whether you wanted to or not. I'll see you in court, bitch. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Wow, Nick. So that's why you helped me out for free. Yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Aw, Nick! Nick! Nick? We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, there's the rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can I guess I can clean out some evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. What do we get rid of? Got rid of the camera. Get rid of the camera, and it seems like we got rid of her her uh, heart's testimony. Alright. Let us head over to the lake. December 27, Gord Lake Park, Entrance. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, huh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. How, how the fuck do you do that? What? How do you snap a tie in half? That's physically impossible. I mean, you can rip one apart, but how do you just snap it unless you like throw it in a freezer or something? I don't know. Sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have the scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty it's my duty to you as an officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Ah! No one can go in the woods today. The woods? Where Lotto was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and approximate and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad, so no one can go in for a while. I guess Lotto's in a lot of trouble. Anyways, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Well let's head to that uh Oh, what's going on over here? Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. I thought Larry was still with us. December 27th, boat rental shop. The old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem! I know that clearing of the throat anywhere. <laughs> Hello. What may have, what might you two be doing here? Up for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg! There's no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Er, uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find something, uh, if you find something out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyways? Who knows? Probably covering his... Probably covering his own tracks for his involvement in the DL6 case. I'm moving my fucking micro, microphone right now so you can hear a little bit of squeaking. Alright, there we go. Uh, let's get in there. Hey, Maya, you know what time it is? Time to do the heist. He left the parrot? Why would you leave the parrot? Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Squawk! 
Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, squawk. Can't believe that he run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello, squawk. All right, I'm here to do one thing and one thing only. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Squawk. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there's any money in there. Aw, you really just wanted to rob the guy? I'm doing it for evidence, you fucking evil little monster. That's why, that's why I like you so much. But hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something valuable in here. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, oh, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Oh, shit. Edgeworth? Nick? Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now it's time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on describing the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Pulling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on a boat, firing twice. It's exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for the caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who, but who could have written the letter? And what did it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Looks like I don't know yet. Did we ever find the name out of the guy that was in the, um, that was in the elevator with, uh, Edgeworth and his dad? Hmm. But one thing's for certain, this letter is an amazing clue. Letter from safe added to court records. Cool. Polly, tell me your secrets. Should I be taking care of Polly, Nick? You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know we're here anyways. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says he can't take you. Great, now the bird's gonna gonna hate me. Alright. Hmm, everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn the heater on. I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. Alright. Anything in the garbage? Ah! What's wrong? Uh, oh, never mind. What, tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a Pink Princess special this week. Oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> okay. I think we found everything that we could find here. So let us move on. Let's head to Criminal Affairs. December 27, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gone back yet. Gumshoe? Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today! Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. Those shot caretaker? He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing he do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Alright, Detention Center. Edgeworth, can we speak to you? Alright, Summer 27th Detention Center. Visitor's room. You look like you look as grim as always. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You you don't remember? No, I don't. I would assume I would assume that his traumatic experience would stop him remembering from things back when like that. Your lunch money was stolen, was it in third grade? Lunch money. Oh, right. I see. I remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyways. 
Mr. Edgeworth didn't, you know? That trial was the reason Nick became defense attorney. Why are you snitching on me? Stop it. Stop telling my secrets. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it doesn't sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple to a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edward. Perhaps. Don't worry, I'll cheer you up. Check this out. Sorry. I'm not sure I can help you with that. Okay. Uh, more important, I want to show you this shit. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me? Whoa, that old guy, uh, who's that old guy anyways? I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he's following this letter, then. Which means there is someone else behind it. Now's the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Oh, shit. Two men, meeting myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statu the statute of limitations on DL6 incidents. Hmm. What? Wait. That old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, we did learn his name. What was it? It was Yanni? Yanni Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Right. Yanni Yogi. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. He just happened to be in the elevator together. Fit, uh, we just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in us on a little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I say you're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. He'll just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to... I was in the hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary, temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court, and Yogi was found innocent. <laughs> Whenever I hear Yogi, I just think of Yogi Bear. He's like, hey, boo-boo. But well, isn't, isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right? I think I shot my dad. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me the last few days. I swear to God, if Edgeworth says he shot his own fucking father, I'm going to lose it. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed? A crime you committed? A memory of Moida. Who's your Moida? I think... I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I have the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet. Said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout. You'll just use up more oxygen. Wait a minute. It's not telling me who's saying what, but is this his dad talking to him? And Edgeworth was like, I can't take it. You, you're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll stop you. Uh, what? Where are you? Stop breathing my air. 
No, father. He's attacking father. Okay. So the all right, Yanni and Yanni and his dad was talking. Just making sure, cause no one put any names on who. Then I see the pistol laying at my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from the day in court or the bailiffs. Oh, uh, so he meant to shoot the guy, but he shot his dad instead. In the days I picked up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Bang! And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone chilling scream. A scream that rungs in my ears for the past 15 years. But that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth. You mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my dad. Shot my dad. My dad's dead. God damn it, Edgeworth. You... Come on. You just... God damn it. <laughs> this is bad. What are we gonna do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do. Like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There it is, Nick. There's someone else who knows about DL6. Grossberg. Alright. Prosecutor Karma. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life. He's obsessed with, damn, in his personal life. Just, let's just hope he's not smacking his wife around. Shit. He's like, he's like, bitch, this chicken is cold. Smacks her around. I'm like, what the fuck? It's not perfect. He's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all cases, he has taken on, and none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was ever declared innocent. Ever. But, that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! There's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Hey, Edgeworth. Why'd you become a prosecutor anyways? You used to look up to your dad. You say you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was one suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Johnny Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On the day fifteen years ago, the three of us were trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in the elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni had... Uh, he claimed Yanni had not been sound of mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to the lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. 
I started to hate defense attorneys. Oh shit. Well, nice story, dude. I'm out of here. Grossberg, tell me what you got. December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. Mr. Grossberg? Ah, oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. Can't believe you're not. But, my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He's... He's... I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. Wh what? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled? Hmm. Well... Also, consider this. Yogi quit... Something got in my fucking eye. Oh my god. Jesus. <laughs> Yogi quit, uh... Uh, fuck. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he wants to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream, dream was not only a dream, it was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the and deed... Oh, fuck. And the deed was done. No. I don't believe it. Though he was suspected of murder, and the career as a bailiff was in... I can't even say that fucking word. It really came out there. It was fucked up. It got fucked. His career got fucked hard. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the state with the statute of limitations so close. All right, check this out. Uh, quite sorry, I have nothing to say concerning that. Oh, does it not impress you, you son of a bitch? What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very uh, disproving of Mr. Von Karmer's techniques. That was no surprise. Von Karmer is an extreme man. Uh, forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The results? He, uh, shit. The results? He has a perfect win record in court beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And he lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on the spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I'm Gregory Edgeworth. I've been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet yeah, Yanni was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Gregory... That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Shit. So, uh, take a look at this shit. Oh, so this is that letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He did it for the shmoney? He never trusts his clients, that one. The only thing he trusts was his own ability. But he's got his clients found innocent, so why should, that, should, so why should it matter? But actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won the innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but society, he was ruined. You'll understand soon enough. Wait, what is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Those handwriting whose handwriting was this? Do you have an idea who wrote this? It was 
It was Milfred Von Karmer. Could it be Milfred Von Karmer? Von Karmer? Why would he have something to do with this? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Von Karma, Von Karma. Probably because, it's probably his handwriting because he wants everything to be perfect, you know what I mean? Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on the court reports. What? But, but that means the only one who, Mr. Yogi... <sighs> That's a big ass and I was holding that one in for a while. The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh. The whole fuck. If, I truly, if it truly was Von Karma who wrote the letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had innocently killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I sure think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could Von Karma know about my- Why am I fucking yawning so much? I literally like, woke up a couple of minutes before I started the stream. I'm not tired whatsoever. Alright, but how, how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet, I don't know that Von Karma is both yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and perfectionist. He may be seeking to test uh, to satisfy well, he may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was fifteen years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Oh shit. Oh shit, his dad fucking cut him? Took the knife out and just slashed his ass? What about <laughs> what happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial, but Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Had to take a vacation from that ass whipping. Yes. Fucking got them cheeks hurting. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he has taken in many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations. Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he never went to Europe. Yeah, strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the pen I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep perfect records so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do uh, What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring the DL6. Could bring up DL6. You can beat him on it. You can bet him on it. Fuck. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know? I know that. Ew, I'm still fucking yawning. Holy shit. I just believe in Edgeworth. I just believe Edgeworth is innocent. I can't believe he killed someone. But Nick. Mr. Edgeworth admits, admits it himself. His father must have uh, lied to protect them from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chance of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials, hmm. Alright. Well, I guess... We can... Oh, I didn't mean to press talk. There we go. Uh, affairs. So we're at the police department. I'm about to fucking yard again. Holy shit. There's hardly anyone here. Oh my god. I keep yawning. Everyone must go out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, oh, it's you. Ah, oh, it's you! I don't think Umshu will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. 
Sounds like Detective Gunshoe is pounding the pavement for real. That sounds, uh, freaky. <laughs> He's pounding the pavement, hmm. We were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyways. Oh fuck. Is he gonna shoot me? You can go as long as uh, as he's in there. Von Karma? Yeah, he just arrived actually. Von Karma's in the room record? Uh, in the room records? In the record room? Nick, let's hurry. Oh shit, what do you mean let's hurry? I don't want to talk to this guy. The last person I want to talk to right now. You know, still yawning. God damn it. <laughs> Dusty as always. <sighs> we were only here just yesterday. I'm not sure. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma? I don't know. He might be Spider Man. He might be clinging to the fucking ceiling. Well. What's this? Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking through it recently. The label says unsolved case evidence. Hmm, unsolved cases. Nick, the file for DL6 is completely empty. My man just came and snatched it up and ran? What? What are you doing in here? Ah, oh my god. He looks even scarier than he did in court. V Von Karma, you. How do you know my name? What do you mean, how do I know your name? Huh? Have we met? What? What are you saying? We, we see each other, uh, we see each other every day, don't we? In Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? Ahem, I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Ezra's mentor. Alright. Well, maybe you'll remember this! Fool! You think a prosecutor would give you a defense attorney's information? Ha! <laughs> Creep. Alright. Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, you're a student, right? A romantic- a romanticist will still- wait, what? A romanticist who still can't shed the veneer of amateurism? Just like his father, always second-rate, Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to the grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, did you? Uh, didn't you? Me? Grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt the blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I have defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know that Miles Edgeworth will tell the courtroom tomorrow. We were we were right. So Von Karma's going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. All right. I probably shouldn't show him this, but I will. Check this out, motherfucker. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed you instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard Nate since I heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. Oh, shit, he's admitting it. So you admit it? You wrote Mr. Yogi's this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble of bringing it to me. You saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick, what is this thing? Oh! Oh, no! Oh, no! Help me! It's a stun gun. For self-defense, usually. Indeed. Six, 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. 
People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you? Nick, run! Maya! No! Aw, oh, shit! Out of my way. What? <laughs> no. Uh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the deal six evidence, all of it. Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? My Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! The letter. Did you take it? Oh, yeah. Are you alright? I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I mean, it would knock anyone out cold, and you're kind of, like, dainty. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now, when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya! There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya? She's holding something. What is this? A bullet? Deal 6, Incident Evidence Number 7, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Bob Karma was holding this when Maya jumped at him. Hmm. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. My man attacked us. What the hell? What was that about? December 28th, 9.51 a.m. District Court, Defense Lobby Number 2. This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are gonna get settled at last. A lot of things. What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn uh, off from my running with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking gloom as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard today. Whoa! What, what are you doing? Sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought hey, I'd cheer you up with the pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Oh, pal! What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? I have no fear, as promised, I captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. It took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock, I just got in on the I just got on the way in. I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name, but that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edwards if he couldn't remember his past? He doesn't remember, and I'm gonna prove it. Alright. December 28th, 10 a.m., District Court Room, number 3. The court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Alright. The prosecution is ready. Uh... Right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit dis decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by everything he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma. Your opening statement? Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's effort, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense... Uh, sir, uh, the, uh, blah, blah, blah. the defense 
asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness to the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where the witness uh, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness has not the witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Hmm? Uh, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like that. I did. I believe I wasn't running away from nothing. I went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figure I got nothing to do. I figure it got nothing to do with the incident, anyhow. I mean, I don't need one of those motive things, right? I don't got one. So many testimonies yesterday stands as is. Hmm, very well. Let's begin a cross examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm gonna prove it. Alright. Let's get that save on real quick. So we don't have to do all that shit beforehand. Alright. Let's see. First things first, I wanna call bullshit on that, because he left that bird food. Well, probably is a bit of a gour gourmet, but I never know how to pronounce that word, honestly. You see, it's the way it's spelled, but it's supposed to be pronounced something else. So only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's gonna believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come come to your senses. Come on, man. Fear got nothing to do with the incident anyhow. What evidence do I have on me, by the way? Murder weapon. Polly. Deals, file on deals. Oh, check. Hold up. Air, uh, okay. It's fish journey, tap elevator, a bolted heart, murder weapon, to our fight. Alright. Polly Jenkins. Wait, what? After his arrest, fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. Oh, shit. He named the bird? Oh, this is definitely a motive. Oh, that is, that's motive. That's motive and a half. Oh my god. Okay. You lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. Yeah, seems like that. How could you have not known- Of what? How could you have- Fuck. Then how could you have known you didn't have anything to do with the incident? Uh... Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm. You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clear that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Oh, shit. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old cougar's head? It's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well. Witness, please continue. Alright, how do I prove his identity? Polly to the name Polly. I mean, is it possible to bring the bird to the stand and be like, Polly, what's my name? Let's hear from Gregory. Alright, clear ballistic markings. Let's buy some food for Polly. I figure I had nothing to do with the incident. What's, what's this one? Did any one of those motive things? How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edward and the victim, Robert Hammond. 
that way he took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Bright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. You can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Yeah, the fuck it does. Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Of course they are. Order. Mr. Wright, there's a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who the witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho oh, oh. ho. <laughs> now this is interesting. You're approaching me? <laughs> I would like to know myself, so who is he? Don't play dumb var com Varn? Von Kama? Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness names. He's Johnny Yogi. His name is Johnny Yogi. A former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi? From the DL6 incident? It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Johnny Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this in court? This court of law, as you may recall, you need proof. And allow me to repeat one more time that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right? Then I got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that his name's Johnny Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints of the file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? Wait, no fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked at a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingerprints working with the staff, yep. What? 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 Okay, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past? Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess not need- I guess we'll not be able to prove his identity. No! Well, what would you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm? Seems that the case has been decided, no? No. I know what happened. I know everything. I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it in like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are you gonna do? I didn't consider that. He might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright? Perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? See, I was just gonna throw the parrot up there, because the parrot would know. He'd just be like, hey, what's his name, parrot? He's like, quack, Yanni Yogi! Yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait, wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to. Your Honor! The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Mr. Von Karma's up on my proposal. Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Order, order. Well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Did you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go with, with your little game? Hell yeah, I do! The parrot knows everything. Let the parrot take the stand. 
I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Squawk! I'm gonna get to squeaking! Squawk! That's right, that's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring <laughs> the witness is ignoring me. You must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> Very well, witness. Who's your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Hello, hello, squawk. Hmm. Certainly the most uh, the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I don't know. Uh, what do we do, Maya? Hmm. Alright. Hello, hello, squawk. This is fucking ridiculous. This is absolutely, absolutely weird. Yeah, answers to the name Polly. Your Honor, that statement con- Wait, what? I thought I could just call her Polly. Do I have to press her on it? I gotta press her on her name? Fuck. Witness? You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, um, what do I say? Uh, what's your name? What's the number safe? What's your name? Have we forgotten something? As I recall, two days ago. Polly, Polly! Have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6! Squawk! If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker has something to do with DL6. Polly, have we forgot something? Hello! Hello! Squawk! Are you fucking kidding me? That's... That's not what you're supposed to say. Forget something. We forgot. Hello. Hello. Squawk. Uh-oh. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking for real? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have he couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we forget anything? Oh my god. Witness? Fuck. Shit. What's your name? Yeah, I'm just gonna say her name. Polly. Polly, what's your name? Polly! Polly! Quack! Mr. Wright? I think we established that the pair's name is Polly. Does this have anything to do with the owner's identity? Of course it does. Yes, it does. Huh? Fascinating. You claim that the Paris name will prove our, her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think uh, it's bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to provide he is Yanni. We're here to provide. We're here to prove he's Yanni. All we have to do is, all we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the Paris name reveals caretaker identity is the DL6 incident, where the fuck is it? The DL6 case file. DL6 case file? Objection! That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where the, f where the file is... Uh, uh, suspect data, case summary, victim data, suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. Hmm? The page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, you see? Indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly? Exactly, Your Honor. He went to he wanted to remember the name of his fiance when he when she, yeah, who had committed suicide. That's why he mentioned the parrot after that's why he mentioned that's why he named the parrot after her. I see. 
I guess that's possible. Uh, mere coincidence, that all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years old. Indeed. Alone is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I gonna find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. We just have one more piece of evidence. Right. But what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. Let's see. Maybe get her to say the number of the safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's try to get her to say something, okay? Polly, what's the number to the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight! One, two, two, eight! My, what a reckless parrot. Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that the number has something to do with the caretaker. One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. Aha! Yes! All right. Yes, it does, Your Honor. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Huh? Ridiculous. How can the number to the save tell us, where the, tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker? Why, why don't you check this out, you son of a bitch? Deal 6 case file. What's the obsession you have with, the, with that case? Mr. Wright, where is file something related to the safe number? The case summary, as you see. It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date of which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28. Well, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on the safe is 22... Uh, it's 1228. Oh. You used the date of the DL6 incident as a number for a safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Uh, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with... with the, why would you give that information? <laughs> this has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we risk a conclusion. Rich, I think we reached the conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time means more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker at the boat shop. Uh, at the boat shop. Of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait. This witness... He doesn't remember. No, it's okay. Oh, wow. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think, finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acted for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name of the court. My name is Johnny Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? You tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand fifteen years ago. Robert Hammond, he said he was mentally unsound. I mean, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The name was written out in careful details. The name, the plan. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance after 15 years. This was it. 
Finally a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Mild Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyways, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma, where's Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his, in his confessor. Then, the defendant Miles Edgeworth is... Innocent, in this case at least. Hmm? Well, today's the last day for the DL6 case to close, so... We gotta prove his innocence in there. Very well. Will the defendants please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this, for this peculiar case. So I would like to press judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. The score finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. But we're not done yet. That is all. This court is adjourned. Objection! Did someone just say objection? Was that Edgeworth? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yoni killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess, he's gonna say he's guilty. He's gonna tell them he was the murderer in DL6 incident. He's gonna tell them he killed his own dad. Oh no. Stop it! The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after the guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Miles Edgeworth out. Motherfucker, you son of a bitch. Are you trying to fucking kill yourself? For 15 years? I have been, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Johnny Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer. The criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I'm guilty for DL6. The status of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. This fucking guy. Order! Order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitation runs out today. I'm not sure, really sure how this, I should deal with this. But it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Motherfucker. December 28, 20, uh, at 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all your effort. Mr. Edgeworth? I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you, you killed your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. Nick? What are you doing? Uh, oh. I was just reading through the court records one more, once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted it. He confessed that he did it. 
in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in the, in the court record. In any case, tighten your belt. The real fight has just be, is just beginning. I'll prove your innocence. Trust me. Right. December 28, 2.30, District Court, courtroom number 3. <sighs> Yet another yawn. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Ezworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, th then though pointless, let the defendant do their cross-examination. The statute of limitations on DL6 incident runs out today. Though, it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Fine karma. You knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Well, will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. <laughs> I lost my voice for a moment. <laughs> Holy shit. When testifying about this matter to the court, uh, when Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That'll be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please. Please. All right. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in an elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot. Then I screamed. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. I call bullshit. Hmm. And until now, you thought his memory was a dream? You were, you were, ah, uh, fuck. We were stuck in the elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory out of the events. Ah, uh, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, the cross-examination please. Yes, your honor. Okay. I already see one thing that stands out for me. My father, Rose argue, and then something heavy dropped at my feet. Picked it up, threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted to stop. A moment later, there was a single gunshot. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember to this day. Well, first off, photograph of seeing the murder. Here in this photograph, you can obviously see he was shot twice, I believe. Uh, trial. One bullet found in the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Are you sure you're you're the uh, Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard this, I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at the file once more. T one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that you do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept I don't accept the evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? The victim data, dickhead. Look at the victim data in this file. It says quite plainly the murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. 
yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the incident was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired the second shot? Your Honor, I'm sure you were aware. This incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, We, as we have heard. One of those shots were fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot was fired as something in this case? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Be damn right I will. Let me just make sure. Okay. Found the victim's body. The ballistic margins match the murder weapon's barrel. Okay. Have I even used this bullet yet? You recover. Okay. Do you have evidence that the second that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? Uh, shit. Let's try this. Mr. Wright, please think how I feel having a look at this evidence time to time. Shows ridiculous evidence. Okay, just making sure, just making sure, okay, just making sure, alright, alright, hold up. I might fuck this up, I might actually lose this, alright. Just making sure, give me a second, give me a second, Judge, I got this, alright, calm down. Okay, alright. Try again, Mr. Wright. Alright. Do you have evidence that's a second... Shit. Alright, so... Photograph of seeing the murder. It would show two shots, right? Look at this photograph. Oh! I didn't notice, there's one in the fucking doorway. This is a f this is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim's laying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So, let me get this straight. So the proofs two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge contradiction in the photo. I didn't notice it until now. Look at this shit. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see, a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet, there's also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired the second shot. Order, order. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could the someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the su case summary page. Case summary? That's on page one. Look what's written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. Well, at the scene. He does have a point. And that second bullet has never been found. Why? 
because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edwards' life was, uh, fuck, claimed Gregory was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made the bullet hole in the door. Order, I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing is quite clear, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma said, the second bullet fire was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So, all we have is a single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the, def I have to discount the defense claim. Shit. And I praise the judge for his wisdom in the matter. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Sorry, Maya. What? It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my, conject all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But you said you did it. You said you'd do it, Nick. Nick, you say you get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I won. I thought there was another person, someone else, who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be it could be that simple. This case had stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick? Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth, precisely. I would like to ask one thing, Miles Edgeworth, before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though... You killed your father, though that, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh, no. He's accepting the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitation on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone else have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's going blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Objection! Your Honor, I, I object. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Oof. Nick? I don't know. This case is perfect. Oh, no. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What? What'd you say? Nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, um... The second bullet. It, uh... It exists. What? But we just heard proof that it does not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really gra I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The the murderer. The murderer? Then tell us just who is the murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Um first of all, how could they have found it? It's not easy to find a straight bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there nothing... Was there some... Ah, fuck. Was someone pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? The murderer had to find it. The murderer didn't need it. Was there a need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Didn't need it. Why would the murderer have spent the time looking for the straight bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um... The murderer had no reason to take the bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh, had to take it. Had to take it? Murderer? What's that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. 
Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer. Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you're gonna perform surgery right there. You know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head. But what if that really happened? What the fuck is going on here? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. And they left with the second bullet inside of them? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yeah. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fighting inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the man inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright? You're truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it. Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Me too! So, uh... So Von Karma went on vacation, huh? Maybe long enough to, uh... Fix that injury? Crazy. Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Grossberg, uh, Gregory Asworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see? Yes, an annual, uh, unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he'd taken uh, his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean, it could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh shit. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. No, Your Honor. Well, you have initiated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Initiated. Indicated. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Oh. Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it? I'ma say it now. I'ma press him. Your Honor. There's a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who's your suspect? V... The... Uh... My hands are shaking. The what? Von Karma. Von Karma? He's smiling! You know he did it! You mean THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there. <laughs> you don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? 
so you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. You have... I would have need surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated me. Have him testify. Hmm, Nick? Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth. I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably did, didn't undergo surgery. That would leave the doctor as a witness. Nobody's that perfect. So, did Von Karma pull the bullet out himself? He probably still has the fucking bullet in him! That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Alright, Von Kammer, I'll prove it. And I'll use... I'll even use evidence I know how you like to use my... What? I'll even use evidence I know how you like it some... Oh, I know how you like it so much. Fuck, why did I fuck it up? How am I doing? You see my channel? I'm doing pretty fine. I'm really liking this right now. I'm liking this a lot. It's really... It's really goofy. Last time I had goofy things like this was, you know, Dang and Rampa. They got some goofy shit in there. The evidence that proves that Von Karma was shot. Alright. Shot from approximately one meter away. Take in. Overhead. Metal detector? Oh my god. Can I use the metal detector? <laughs> I'm gonna create overlays and panels for my stream. All right, I'll check it out. Can I use the metal detector on him? Oh my god. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trial. So, then I ask, where's the bullet now? I think it's unlikely Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You don't mean... I do. There's a possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. Wouldn't he get, like, fucking lead poisoning or some shit? We could use the metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still in you. Order. Order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we allow to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitation runs out of this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Hmm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but I had but I had to give it a shot. All right. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma. You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there's a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? 
Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from Deal 6? Of course he can. You don't have any of the Deal 6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the record room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close, one day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you? Uh, who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convince Edgeworth? I can link the bullet in your shoulder to Deal Six incident. And here's my proof. Thanks, Maya. That's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, but the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All, bull all bullets fired from a gun are marked with the weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon can fire, fire a bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory's Edgeworth's heart. And the other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet bur buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets have been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove your bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings on that bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. Oh! I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! Get away! Get away from my father! Bang! It's that scream I've heard in the elevator 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma. Edgeworth! Only you. So it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shaved me with the penalty of my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Fifteen years earlier, Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I... I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I have covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth. It was a shock like none I have ever had. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court... I was in the court record room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way into the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. It was in pain. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. 
I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Asworth was still unconscious. He died never knowing who had shot him. Later he spoke through the medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come open the elevator door? Judge? What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring it into this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. The score finds the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. Holy fucking shit. December 28th, 50, 50? 5.38 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick, we did it. Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. Gotta say, I'm impressed. Heh, <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right? Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know. I know. Try thank you. I... I see. Th thank you. Right. You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoops! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I see. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? I... I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lada! Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, thank you very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just took, just look at you. You want to stick your hand in a cookie jar even if there was no one there. You, you were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lada? Who, me? I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quickly. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick! My life is over! Wh why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick! I'm not long for this world. Huh? You don't look sick. It's Kiyase. She's gonna be... She's gonna live in Paris, Nick. Paris! She's leaving me behind! Should've seen that one coming. Yo, Edgy. There you are. Um, yes. Here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here. A little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts. Come along. You come along tonight too. 
My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, know, Nick. That's the suit that question. Uh, that's the suit that questioned me. When he says treats, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Uh, I think it'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah. What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah. That's not strange. People give away so people give it away to celebrate sometimes. Is it thirty-eight dollars? Shit! This guy, this fucking guy. Who's this guy? Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. Thirty-eight exactly? Nick, was it an exact amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? Thirty-eight. No. No, Larry, it was you? What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to the day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came in school anyways. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah? Too well. Right? You may not know this, but we used to have a saying back at school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, it sure was an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitation has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Where does that leave me? I become a defense attorney because of what you two did? Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. D death? The death sentence for both of you. Man, if only I've known, I'd become a prosecutor. The same goes for me. Only the other way around, I guess. For the longest time, I thought I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part, of, in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Wanna switch, right? Hey, y'all. Line up, I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go. And after that, dinner's on me. Detective Gumshoe took us out to the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Whoa! I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? There's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you. It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. Gotta jump out here, but congrats on finishing the case. Thanks. It is a, it was a long one, but thanks for, uh, thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate it. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye. What time is it? Good. Yeah. The first train for the mountains have already left. To the station. I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya? So, you're leaving? Yeah. 
It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. I want to show her my badge, but now's not the time. Check this out. A bullet. Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the last but you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick? Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run the office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Huh. <laughs> I don't think you graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh. Got a bad feeling about this. So I guess that's the ending of <laughs> Ace Attorney. Oh, shit. Hold up. Hey, pal. Mr. Ashworth came down to the precinct to wish... Oh, shit. Talk about persistent surprise. Pleasant surprise. Attack the gumshoe. Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Oh, what? So are we, are we getting a fucking here? This is where they're at now? Huh? Nick? Nah, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at the cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady. He's got exactly. Oh, fuck. Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah? Alright, Larry. Oh, they're simping it. Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I right, he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bells or taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. I barely remember that guy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I told him everything he knows. What is this, like a documentary? Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Huh. The defense attorney for whom I wrote the evidence for? Oh, you should know I've taken management of the Gateway Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Gateway? I meant to say Gatewater. But it went by so fast. Are we getting... Are we... <laughs> We're gonna where where they're at now, man. Everyone. Ahem. Hmm? Oh, it's you, Phoenix, right? Yeah. Maya's understudy, is he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. This is cool. I like this. 
I want to see what it, I really hope the I really hope it's not that long though. Phoenix right? Uh, is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't get started with a name like Phoenix. No, oh my god, she talks way too fast. Holy shit. How long are we even in? Three hours into the stream? I'm pleased to announce that Pink Princess is a hit. I sure own it's Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public until the show's over. I show I wouldn't want the kids I wouldn't want to ruin the kids' dreams, you know? Okay. <laughs> hey, it's Penny. I got a letter from Maya the other day. Sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I visit I wanted to visit, but it's time I sent her some pink princess cards. She says can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyways? Alright. Oh, this fucking idiot. Right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk pink princess, alright? But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day, and I saw her. The one inside the pink princess suit. What a dog. It was kind of shy for a boy of my tender age. Yeah, I remember right. That lawyer guy. Oh, me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know, the picture I took of everyone? Well, it's just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. I fucking like Lada, she's pretty cool. <laughs> oh shit, Mia's there. Capcom. All right. Episode five, Rise from the Ash. What? There's another case? Oh shit. Oh fuck. All right. Oh man. I didn't expect that. Did not expect that one. Hmm. All right. What the fuck am I looking at? What? Alright, that's amazing. But I think that's where I'm gonna leave the stream at now. So, once again, as I stretch in my chair, holy shit, I want to thank everyone who joined the stream. It helps a lot. It was a big help. Thank you very much. And for those who are watching on YouTube, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the support. In the comments below, um... I honestly don't know what I was going to say. I totally freaking forgot. I was going to say, so far, probably tell me what's your favorite case, because that one was pretty good. Fucking Edgeworth's case is pretty good. I would play this a little more at this time, but it's the start of a new case. And I know we're not going to make that much leeway. So, that's why I'm going to end it here. If it's the morning for you, 
have a lovely rest of your day. If it's the evening, uh, make sure you take it easy, right? It's time to rest, relax, you know, chill out. If it's late in the dead of night, then become the true phantom thief that you are. And if it's your birthday, or birthday of a loved one and or friend, family and or friend, you know, uh, go treat yourselves. Do something nice, right? And that is all right now for Phoenix Wright. As always, the stream times are going to be in the description below. On Twitch, the stream times are on the About Me page and stuff like that. And, once again, as always, I would like to thank everyone for their support. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Everybody, please take care.